an innocent man, even God in human flesh, sacrifices himself to save his enemies. Has there ever been a more loving act than that? Even Mahatma Gandhi said, A man who is completely innocent offered himself as a sacrifice for the good of others, including his enemies, and became the ransom of the world. It was a perfect act. Can we even comprehend that kind of love? In the same way that Israelites were stunned by God's perfect holiness when they were led out of Egypt, we should be equally stunned by the love that led him to give up his life for us. And it's in the cross that those two elements of God's character are most clearly seen, both his love and his holiness. The picture of the cross vividly tells us two things, that God is so holy that he must punish sin with death, and that God is so loving that he preferred to take the punishment that we deserve upon himself rather than let us suffer. Here's a parable that might make this clear. There was once a couple of best friends who grew up together. They were extremely close. At college, one studied law and the other studied business. After graduation, the one who had studied law became a judge in his hometown, while the other had to leave to seek employment in another city. Because of the distance between them, they gradually fell out of touch and lost contact. The judge tried to contact his friend on several occasions, but to no avail. One day, many years later, the judge was presiding over a series of cases when he looked down at his papers to discover that the next case involved a crime so serious that it carried the death penalty. Handing out the death penalty was a grave task at the best of times, but when he looked up he was shocked and sickened to see that the defendant was in fact his estranged friend who he hadn't seen for years. He had fallen on hard times and become embroiled in serious criminal activity. What is worse is that there was no doubt that he was guilty of the crime. There were many witnesses to what he'd done and he'd admitted it with his own lips. He had no defence. Justice then demanded that he be put to death in accordance with the law. So this was the judge's dilemma. If he didn't convict his friend of the crime, then the law wouldn't be upheld, justice wouldn't be served, and he would be a corrupt judge. That wasn't an option. However, if he did convict his friend, he'd be sentencing him to death. He couldn't put someone he loved to death, so that wasn't an option either. How could he be both just and loving at the same time? Well, this is what he did. He found his friend guilty and handed out the death sentence. In this act, justice was served and he would remain a righteous judge. However, rather than let his friend take the punishment for his own crime, the judge himself took off his robes, came down from his lofty position of power and walked over to his friend saying, I can't sentence you to death because I love you. So I'm going to offer myself to the executioner to pay your debt. Promise me that you'll use the freedom that I am about to purchase for you well. You now have a second chance at life. Go home and break the law no more. The judge then went to the electric chair and gave up his life. With the demands of the law met, the friend could now go free. Justice and love would meet in that one single act. Now, as we read that parable, we should feel a little bit uneasy, if not absolutely outraged at how unfair it is that the innocent judge should sacrifice himself to let the guilty scumbag walk free. He should have died for his own crime, right? It's so unfair. Yet, this is a picture of what Jesus did for us on the cross. We were guilty. We're the scumbag in this story. Jesus was innocent, yet he died for us to pay our debt so we could go free. That's the beautiful scandal of grace, that it makes life unfair, that we can escape the death that we deserve. Jesus died so that we can go on living. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. Now all of this leaves us with a decision to make. Because if you have lied or stolen or blasphemed his name or done anything wrong at all in your lifetime, you have broken the moral law and have a debt of death to pay. There is no use hoping that God will not punish you for your wrongdoing, that he will turn a blind eye to it. God is a righteous judge who has to see that justice is served. He is holy. He is pure. 
The decision you're left with is whether to let God punish you for your own sin or to humbly accept the sacrifice that Jesus has already made on your behalf. Those are the only two options available to you. Either you pay your own debt of death or you accept Jesus' death in your place. There is no third option. A Christian is no less a sinner than anyone else. We are simply people who have accepted that we need a saviour and put our faith in Jesus Christ. That's why we sing, Because the sinless saviour died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God the just is satisfied to look on him and pardon me. God looks on what Jesus has done and pardons me. There's nothing we can do to make ourselves right with God. We can't earn our way to heaven. His moral standard is just too high and we just keep breaking it. We have a heart sickness. Our only hope of salvation lies in what our Saviour Jesus has done for us. As the prophets foretold, he is our claim to righteousness. Our hope is in him alone. And he is the only Saviour there is because he's the only one who died to pay our debt. So the Bible is right when it says, There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. And Jesus was right when he said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you have any intention of avoiding death and hell when you stand before God on Judgment Day, you need Jesus. If you trust in any other name, whether it be Buddha, Allah, Muhammad, Vishnu, Kali, or just yourself and your own good deeds, you are without hope. Your good deeds can't atone for your sin and those pagan gods are merely demons whose intentions are to draw you away from the truth. Jesus is the only way. Paul writes in the book of Romans, Now God has shown us a different way of being made right in his sight, not by obeying the law, but by the way promised in the scriptures long ago. We are made right in God's sight when we trust in Jesus Christ to take away our sins, and we can all be saved in this way, no matter who we are or what we have done. For all have sinned, all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet now God in his gracious kindness declares us not guilty. He has done this through Christ Jesus who has freed us by taking away our sins. For God sent Jesus to take the punishment for our sins and to satisfy God's anger against us. We are made right with God when we believe that Jesus shed his blood, sacrificing his life for us. It doesn't matter what you have done. Jesus will save you if you let him. All he asks is that you repent of your sin, make him Lord of your life and put your faith in him for salvation. God has given you an escape route from death, the death that you deserve at great personal expense. Please take it. I know your pride is going to fight this. It's going to tell you that God couldn't possibly turn you away. You help old ladies across the street. You're a good person. That's not enough. The soul that sins will die. If you haven't done it already, humble yourself today and accept your need of a saviour. Jesus is your only hope.